Students are often told that inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon, yet you listed three reasons for inflation, none of which were too much money. What's the role of money in inflation? So um, I guess I would say that when there is too much demand for a limited supply of goods and services, that's a situation that creates inflation. And it ties in in the framework that I articulated with um, economic slack. So if I would say, for example, now, just now, after all these years of um, promoting faster growth in the economy and trying to diminish unemployment, probably now the labor market is in a normal state. But um, it likely would foster inflationary pressures if demand rose at a sufficiently rapid pace and on a long-run basis such that um, we pushed against now dwindling labor resources. That's one reason why I believe it's important for us to normalize or move monetary policy toward a more neutral level. But simply um, an accommodative monetary policy when it's not occurring in the context of an economy that is close to full employment, that isn't inflationary. Uh, I remember when, uh, so first in the end of 2008, the Fed lowered its overnight interest rate to zero. Then we started buying up longer-term assets, which swelled the quantity of reserves in the banking system. And um, people who reasoned that money causes inflation, but thought that that's in somehow independent of the state of the economy, worried that our purchase of those assets meant that inflation was around the corner. Um, our response was to say, look, the unemployment rate is very high. It's 10%, 9%, 8%, very high. And, you know, maybe when the unemployment rate is declined to low levels, that's a legitimate concern. But it's not in the context of an economy with this much slack. I think history proved um, the view that I just explained to be right. So money doesn't cause inflation independent of the state of the economy.